Hey, what's going on, guys? Toby here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. I appreciate it. If you could, you guys can subscribe here. And if you could subscribe to the 560 WQM YouTube page, you can watch the show. Myself, Leroy Horde, Tobin and Leroy, weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., live every single day. You guys can watch all four hours. You can watch clips on demand. Check it on out. Usually put up a best of Dolphins, best of Heat every single day. Um, all the Dolphins have been slow to pick up, I'm sure, next week with the draft coming up. Uh, Panthers, all that good jazz. So check that on out for me, everybody. I'd appreciate it. Uh, hours away from going down to the Kaseya Center. going to be boots on the ground tonight for what could be the end of the Heat season. It is the play-in game. They're taking on the Chicago Bulls, and I do think that there is an incarnation of Heat fans that are just like, let's just – End this. Let's just end this. Let's just end this season. I'm tired of this season. I'm tired of the misery, the close losses. I get it, man. I I, I understand. I'm not of that mindset. I want this to go uh, as long as possible. I think going from a shot away from the finals to out of the playoffs is very, very embarrassing. And I would like the team to to make the postseason. And there's not the honor in, you know, going six against the Lakers with everybody injured and Jimmy having the exhausted games. There's not that honor in losing in six to the Bucks. Like, you know, it's the first round. Losing in the first round is the first round. So I, I get the logic. You know, just get your ping pong balls, get your assets in a row, live to fight another day. It's what the the Mavericks just got fined for, yeah? Like, they just uh, basically got fined three quarters of a million dollars for not having a competitive spirit. And we know with Miami – they're not the tangy type of franchise. It's not really in their DNA, their culture, any of that stuff. So, you know, maybe I am a, a Heat zombie in that regard that I don't want to see that. But I don't. I want to see the Heat make the postseason. So hopefully we will see that tonight against Chicago. I do think that part of it is a lot of Heat fans are just kind of exhausted with this version of the team. And certainly between the, the, the big three pieces of Jimmy, Bam, Tyler Hero, uh, Kyle Lowry making a big chunk of the salary cap. Duncan Robinson, who doesn't even play. So you have that $50 million right there that feels like it could be used in a much better direction for Miami, especially with Bam, Jimmy, and Tyler. Uh, Going to be your, your big money guys on the team and on the salary cap. But I do think that there is a lot of Heat fans that are tired of this core together. They have seen it go to the finals, be a shot within the finals, get swept by the Bucks, all that stuff together. It needs some kind of big spark. And to the Heat's credit, like they did try and do that with bringing in Kyle Lowry, you know, a guy who was close with Jimmy Butler. You thought getting a true point guard in here going to make life easier for Bam. And really, the biggest thing with Kyle has been uh, he hasn't been healthy. You know, a guy who was just not functional last year in the postseason, and really throughout most of this regular season wasn't that either. And so. If they're able to get in there, if they're able to get anything like they got that night against Atlanta, which I don't know if I have a ton of confidence in, but maybe, um, then maybe some things that maybe you you look at them a little bit different. But for right now, that signing has not been successful at all by any grade that you could put it that you could you could put it through, uh, because you know signing an older point guard and he's out with injury issues. Well, what did you think was going to happen? So. What will be the Heat's big move coming up this this summer? The interesting thing is uh, there's already been some some fodder that's been out there by uh, an old friend, Brian Windhorst, you know that of uh, the finger meme gang. And I understand. Look, I was not a a big Windhorst fan certainly when he covered the Miami Heat down here. Uh, you know, some, especially a lot of the articles that Windhorst wrote about Dwayne Wade. I felt like he had this one that uh, I found really annoying where he was just like, oh, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, they're not really friends, they're friendly. Almost like the, that they were putting on an act. Um, and that entire big three heat, it gave such a us against the national media narrative uh, from down here that anybody who was going to talk about the Miami Heat, you kind of just felt like you were in this spot where you had to defend your team. You had to defend your team. But – to win horse credit, listen. The guy has uh, the guy did have a, a the guy has been uh, covering the uh, the sport for a long time, and certainly this past summer um, had the story of the summer basically in the palm of his hand, and told everybody that Utah was going to blow up their team with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, and they were going to just start over. Knew it before everybody, threw it out there before everybody. And so, you know, kudos. It was obviously he knew something was uh, seemed to be going on. 
Um, and I know that there'll be Heat fans who look at this uh, stuff that Windhorse has said that I'll, I'll bring up here in a second, and they'll just be like, Windhorse doesn't have any Heat sources. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Just take it for what it is. So Windhorse was on the Bill Simmons podcast and first take and basically said something to the effect of they were asking about Damian Lillard and he said that the team that you should really keep an eye on is the Miami Heat, that Miami Heat on stars, and I know that we've heard this all before, I get it, I get it. He said that he believes that Miami is always on stars and that's the team that I'm watching when it comes to Damian Lillard. He also said that on the Bill Simmons podcast, Top 10 players, not all of them, will not all be happy and will want to move, and the Heat are aware. He says, the Heat already have their eye on their next incarnation, and they're always ahead of the game. The only time they've gotten caught flat-footed is with LeBron James. He also said, and I found this interesting, uh, take with it what you will, he said that the Heat really hasn't been in the star game for the last 18 months. They've been keeping their assets dry, waiting for someone to say they want to go there. Um, Which is interesting, and I do think that that has been a big thing that's been Missing out of all this. Look, a lot of stars are, have been moving, and a lot of stars have been out there, and we put it on the whale caps, and I'm guilty as anybody about this. But what Miami needs ultimately out of anything is for somebody to say they want to be here. One of the things that would have happened, helped with Donovan Mitchell, um, and this was a, you know, that was a, the thing that Donovan Mitchell got mad at uh, Ethan about, right? Where, you know, that he didn't seem all the way in on maybe coming to Miami or saying that he wants to go to Miami or Miami was definitely the place because maybe he had concerns about playing with Jimmy Butler. I don't know if that's true or untrue. But the point I'm getting at is they need somebody to say, I want to come to Miami. This is the place that I want to be. So if Damian Lillard does finally pull the trigger on, I want to go somewhere, he has to say to the Heat, or put it known that he wants to go to Miami for a couple of reasons. One, the Heat don't have the war chest of draft picks that a lot of other teams have they do have tradable contracts that's always the thing that people will bring up is that well they have fat contracts that can facilitate a star trade because you have Duncan Robinson you have Kyle Lowry and you'll even have Tyler Hero uh, on, a, on a bigger deal um, on a bigger number so you do have guys that can match up that could get you a Damian Lillard who makes a $50 million contract. You you could make that work. It's just a question of well, what is the other stuff that you would have to give up. And the other thing is, could they be in a scenario where Portland will actually just do right by Damian Lillard? Like the biggest thing is they just want to clear the decks, make themselves whole again, get as many future assets as possible, and they're going to do right by a legend on their squad. That's That's the big thing. With Jimmy, one of the things that really helped, Jimmy made it known, a place I want to go is to Miami. Um, and that's, you know, that was the big, big thing. You need guys to say, that's the franchise I want to go to. You know, that's the one that I pick overall. Because a lot of other places can match and a lot of other places, but Kevin Durant even, you know, while the Miami Heat were on the list, it was always kind of out there. What was the number one place that he wanted to go to? He wanted to go to Phoenix, you know. While it was out there that, you know, Kyrie Irving, you know, like where would he want to go? Now nah, he wanted to go play with Kevin Durant. While it was out there that he wanted James Harden, where was the place that he wanted to go? You know, I want to go to Philadelphia. You know, all these things that are, you need ultimately a guy to say that he wants to come to the Heat. And one of the things that the Heat do have going for them is that Damian Lillard has a very, very strong relationship with Bam Adebayo, uh, you know, Olympic gold medalist teammates. And that is a big thing. Now, could they get Damian Lillard without trading Bam? I don't know. I think I, I think that they wouldn't pull the trigger. I think that the point is if you get a Damian Lillard, I don't think the part the point that they would do is to pair him with Tyler and to Jimmy. I think the point would be you're gonna pair him up with Bam. I don't think that they would be into trading for Jimmy Butler. But this is gonna be an interesting thing. This is definitely gonna be an interesting thing to keep an eye on because if the Heat, if this does end either tonight or if this does end in the first round, certainly I think we all agree that Pat Riley, Andy Ellisberg, Nick, Mickey Arison, and Eric Spolstra are not going to sit idly by and once again run it back. They did that this year, probably, and interestingly enough, because, you know, the, the move wasn't out there. You know, they, they they wanted to, you know, hope that maybe somebody could really screw the pooch on Kevin, Kevin Durant and they could get in the game for him, or, you know, maybe that the Donovan Mitchell thing, maybe they... Thought he was a little bit overrated. I don't know. I'm not saying whether it's right, whether it's wrong. I'm just saying where it is right now. But if this season does end in the next 24 hours or within the next two weeks, then 
certainly I think the, the franchise is going to turn an eye to take that next home run cut. Pat Riley is not young. Eric Spolstra has been at this for a long time. You know he's thirsting to get his next ring too. And I don't know if they've seen the leaps from Tyler Hero and the leaps from Bam Adebayo yet to say those can definitely be the guys next to Jimmy that can carry it all the way. I think that that both of those guys have made improvements and have gotten better, but it certainly hasn't been to a level where you could say, oh, this took us to a next level, clearly, right? I mean, they're fighting for their playoff. They're fighting for the right to go to the playoffs in the in the mediocre slugfest that is the play-in. So, yeah, if this, I, 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 I don't think it's surprising that Windhorst is putting it out there that Miami is already kind of looking towards their next blueprint of what their next contender looks like because I don't think they think it looks like this.